Mission Specialist Mary Ellen Weber. She will be working with the deployment of the tracking and data relay satellite. And our flight engineer, Mission Specialist Nancy Curry. Our commander for STS-70, Tom Henricks. And next to him is pilot Kevin Kriegel. And mission specialist Dr. Don Thomas, who together with Dr. Mary Ellen Weber will be working later today, about six hours after launch, to deploy the TDRS-G tracking and data relay satellite. And the suit up activities are about completed so that uh, the crew will be headed out for the pad here in about another 15 minutes. Pilot Kevin Kriegel, he's also ready to go. And mission specialist Dr. Don Thomas, who will be busy later this afternoon working with the deployment of the tracking and data ray satellite, which is the main order of business for today. And our flight engineer, Mission Specialist Nancy Curry. Dr. Mary Ellen Weber, who will be working with Dr. Thomas later this afternoon on the deployment of the IUS Tedris. And our activities right now are proceeding right to the minute. There's our pilot, or our commander, Tom Hendricks, pilot Kevin Kriegel, Mission Specialist uh, Don Thomas. Here we see the astronauts now arriving at the 190 foot, 5 foot level of the fixed service structure at pad B, walking over to the orbiter access arm. And some of them will wait, uh, wait out on the orbiter access arm while other crew members are being assisted with their helmets and other attire so that it doesn't get uh, too crowded. The uh, white room is not very large. And of course, Tom Hendricks will be the first one aboard. And the hatch is being closed and sealed exactly on time. CCSC, OTC. All our activities continue to go smoothly here today. We're not working any technical problems. Our weather is holding for us at this time, and we still expect an on-time liftoff at 941 this morning. And the orbiter access arm can be moved back into position around the hatch in about 30 seconds should an emergency occur. T minus seven minutes and counting. The 
Next milestone is the start of the auxiliary power units by pilot Kevin Kriegel. He'll flip three switches in the cockpit to start each of the three APUs. And then report that's complete. JRPS OTC. Capcus, start APU and hydraulics drip chart recorders. Three main engines now being gibbled. All of these steering checks to assure that we have proper control during ascent. Caution, warning memory is clear, no unexpected errors. Copy. Gaseous oxygen vent hood, which vents. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. And on behalf of everyone in the control room, have a great mission. We're looking forward to it. Thanks for your help. And the vent arm retraction underway on schedule. ELS is go for ET LH2 pressurization. off to Discovery's onboard computers. 20. Sound suppression water system activated. 13 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Main engine ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery to complete NASA's constellation of tracking stations in the sky. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery. Roger, roll, Discovery. Discovery completes the roll to place the shuttle in a heads down, wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Seven seconds into the flight, Discovery's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three-step fashion to 67% of rated performance to lessen the stress on the shuttle's aero surfaces as it passes through the sound barrier. Fifty seconds into the flight, the main engines now beginning to rev up once again to 104% of rated performance, including the new Block 1 engine, all three main engines performing normally. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Discovery now 63,000 feet in altitude, eight miles downrange. All systems continue to function normally in the early stage of the fourth shuttle flight of the year. seconds left in first stage performance of the solid rocket boosters. Discovery approaching the 155,000 foot mark in altitude, some 26 miles downrange. Booster officer confirms solid rocket booster separation. Discovery Houston, performance nominal. Copy, nominal performance. NOTC, horizontal sits configured. Copy that. Uh, TLT, perform MPS helium reconfiguration, please. It's in work. 995. That's a turn. Copy. You see? The CPD. Step, step 979, please. 
Copy and work. SAP copy. OTC, C double S. Go ahead, double S. Yes, sir, I can give you step 966. I'll cross these figure for flight. Copy. Flight booster, locks tank at flight pressure, and just a heads up if you're going to watch on the LSK 51, the secondary seal. The secondary seal pressure uh, will stay low like that, negative, because it's a block one engine. It doesn't have a transducer in that location. Copy. GLS entity, hold at 31. Downtown clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds. Do we like permission to run a multi uh, test contingency? SP entity. I'll just SP, let's go ahead and move it. And CBRS, you have a go. Okay, should have result in 15 seconds. Copy, and one. I copy. SP. SRB T zero ignition. Lift off confirmed. Roger that. Houston Discovery roll program. Roger roll Discovery. Flight guidance see the roll. Yeah. Copy. Flighty come. Go ahead. We have a good fast. Copy. Negative return. Discovery, Houston, negative return. Negative return. Yeah, check that out. Yeah, it's great. We got spec 200 messages coming. Yeah. High robust coming on. US deploy enabled. Copy discovery, thank you. Beginning step eight, raising to 58 degrees. Discovery, that's a deploy. Discovery, excellent job. Happy faces here. Good morning. Welcome aboard Discovery. We're 160 miles above the Earth, just approaching the southern tip of Baja. And we'd like to uh, share a moment with you to dedicate the uh, new Consolidated Control Center. After 30 years of hard work, which included over 100 manned space flights from our old control room, we're now entering the next century by opening the new control center, which will lead our manned space flight program into uh, future benefits aboard the International Space Station and into the next century, continuing our exploration of the solar system for the benefit of humankind. Aboard Discovery on this flight, we have a plaque 
that commemorates the opening of the new control center, and it says, in recognition of the first flight flown from this mission control room, this plaque was flown on the flight STS-70 on board the Space Shuttle Discovery. Built by the pirate teamwork and powered by pirate spirit, and we dedicate it to all the folks who have worked in the flight control rooms and who will work in the new control room. And it's our honor to carry this plaque for those folks, and we do dedicate it to their teamwork and effort. And it's not the rooms that make the difference, it's the people that man those rooms. And we trust our lives and our nation's manned space program to those folks, and we are proud to be a part of your team. That's Tom, and this is a picture of Tom and I doing Hercules activation, and uh, this is just one part of Hercules, the HAP and the IBM ThinkPad computer, and you'll see the actual camera coming to view in just a little bit. This camera on the ground weighed approximately 70 pounds, and it was uh, quite difficult to train with, particularly for star alignments, to hold this device over your head and uh, be able to get an alignment within 0 .05 degrees. We had some difficulty with the alignment today, mostly due to the stabilization of the camera because it is so large. And there's the camera that I'm holding right now. So the Zybion camera, which is a multi-spectral imaging intensifier camera, and it's got its own alignment system that's a canister on top, and then a view cam attached to that. Discovery, Don, no response. It's great to watch you work the experiment here.
Kinex cameras all installed in the aft window. We're ready to begin our operations here on the flight deck. What we'll be doing here during this series of tests is that Tom Hendricks, the commander, will be manually inputting some thruster firings in during night passes, and we'll be looking at the glow and the emissions from the thruster plumes out around the vicinity of the tail area and the impacts on the orbiter structure.
Discovery Houston, uh, we see you on energy approaching the hack. No update to winds or weather, and your go for a nominal shoot deploy. Nominal shoot deploy. Commander Tom Hendricks has now uh, assumed manual control, uh, flying the orbiter, taking over from automatic computers as he begins to negotiate his way around the so-called heading alignment cylinder, the mythical point of reference that commanders and pilots use uh, to uh, align themselves with uh, their landing strip. Henrik's leveling off the wings as he begins to negotiate a 237 degree turn, aligning himself with runway 33, the southeast and northwest approach, and an end to Discovery's 21st mission. Time to touch down, just three minutes, Discovery at an altitude of 31,000 feet. vortices of uh, the moist air in the early morning hours at the Kennedy Space Center streaming off of Discovery's wings. Discovery Houston on energy at the 180. On energy. Discovery Houston on energy at the 90. On energy. Henrik's now completing his turn uh, to align himself with runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center. Time to touch down. Discovery Houston, copy, runway in sight. About 90 seconds away from touchdown. Discovery now at an altitude of about 13,000 feet as it completes its final alignment to runway 33. Discovery speed brake comes open uh, as the orbiter now aligned with runway 33. Its final descent seven times steeper than that of a commercial jetliner on final approach. Less than a minute from touchdown. A final pre-flare maneuver of Discovery's nose by Commander Tom Hendricks. Pilot Kevin Kriegel will drop the landing gear. at the Kennedy Space Center to complete a 3.7 million mile mission, leaving behind in orbit NASA's newest tracking and data relay satellite. Houston, copy, will stop. Welcome home, Tom and crew. Stand by for your post-landing deltas. 